okay, uh, let's start with Ben. Uh, ben will start his presentation about uh, how to provide the best practice for SMEs and startups during the COVID-19 crisis. Ben, the stage is all yours. Okay. Uh, thank you, Lintang. Oke, okay, halo semuanya. Uh, saya ngomongnya bilingual aja ya. Indonesia sama Inggris. Karena ada beberapa audiens kita kan orang uh, berbahasanya Indonesia juga. Oke. Okay. Nah, uh, terima kasih buat semua yang udah berpartisipasi. Hari ini saya mau membahas satu topik, yaitu how to provide the best practice for SME and startup during the COVID-19 crisis. Nah, uh, secara nggak langsung kan, ternyata uh, pandemi corona ini mempunyai impact untuk UMKM maupun uh, startup-startup usaha-usaha kecil ataupun uh, usaha mikro atau usaha menengah. Nah, oke, okay, uh, perkenalan sedikit. Uh, nama saya Benedi Karuna, bisa dipanggil Ben. selaku uh, digital marketing eksekutif di Deo Web. Nah, hari ini saya juga mau nge-share uh, beberapa insight secara digital marketing, terutama di masa-masa pandemi coronavirus. Nah, apa sih yang terjadi di masa pandemi ini? Oke, seperti yang udah kita semua tahu, yang pertama, Uh, everyone stay at home. Semuanya itu uh, dihimbau untuk tetap berada di rumah. Nah, aktivitas yang kita lakukan juga semuanya itu ada di rumah. Seperti misalnya belajar, lalu uh, bekerja, dan shopping. Nah, misalkan dari belajar, semuanya itu pindah ke platform online. Yang sebelumnya tadinya kita belajar, seperti misalnya untuk anak sekolah ataupun Uh, mahasiswa yang tadinya mereka harus pergi ke kampus. Nah, semua itu pindah ke platform digital. Baik itu dari uh, media Zoom atau media Google Classroom, seperti itu. Nah, bekerja juga sama. Majority of work must be done from home. Uh, mayoritas dari pekerja dihimbau untuk melakukan pekerjaan itu dari rumah. Seperti banyak dari kita atau teman-teman kita itu udah mulai kerjanya dari rumah. Nah, dari ketiga poin ini, uh, jadi apa sih yang bisa dilakukan oleh uh, pelaku bisnis UMKM ataupun startup-startup? What SME or startup can do? Oke, okay, yang pertama. Nah, go online. Dan use digital marketing strategy. Nah, kenapa harus kita harus... Uh, mulai beralih secara online ataupun menggunakan digital marketing strategi. Oke, okay, saya akan bahas satu persatu. Nah, di sini saya paparin uh, empat poin utama, yaitu pertama, own or improve your website. Uh, Sengganya kita harus punya, memiliki website dulu. Nah, setelah kita punya website, kita coba meningkatkan uh, website kita dari bermacam-macam aspek. Yang nanti uh, akan saya coba bahas satu persatu. Nah, yang kedua, increase your social media awareness. Nah, ini juga sebenarnya penting banget dan banyak dispelain sama uh, bisnis-bisnis yang udah stable. Padahal sebenarnya banyak juga bisnis yang mulai merintis uh, usahanya itu dari sosial media. Nah, dari sosial media itu baru mereka uh, lanjut lagi. Entah mereka buka toko offline atau mereka buka uh, website seperti itu. Nah, lalu uh, switch to digital advertising platform. Nah, ini udah mulai harus beralih, karena secara nggak langsung, iklan-iklan yang konvensional, kayak misalnya flyer atau pamflet atau uh, banner-banner di jalanan seperti itu, udah mulai nggak efektif, karena orang-orang udah di, uh, beralih. Yang tadinya mereka kerja harus transportasi ke kantor, sekarang mereka hanya di rumah. Seperti itu. Nah, yang terakhir, don't forget to maximize the email marketing. Oke, okay. uh, kita mulai dari yang pertama. Nah, why should you own or improve your website? Kenapa sih harus mulai memiliki atau uh, meningkatkan performa dari uh, website kalian? Nah, ini saya kasih satu perumpamaan yang simple. Oke, sebentar. 
Nah, yang pertama ini uh, daily search, sorry. Daily search on Google Engine. Nah, contohnya uh, ada beberapa orang nih yang lagi mencari mungkin uh, kemeja batik kayak gitu. Atau baju batik. Nah, mereka kan pasti akan carinya itu uh, secara online. Karena nggak mungkin dong mereka kan uh, di pandemi corona seperti ini mereka pergi ke toko-toko, toko-toko offline. Nah, alternatifnya itu mereka cari uh, secara online. Mereka belanja secara online. Nah, mereka kan cari tuh di Google. Mereka search uh, baju on, apa baju batik kayak gitu. Nah, step berikutnya yaitu visitor-visitor itu yang tadinya udah nge-search, mereka akan uh, ketemu nih. Misalnya kalian kan menjual, memprovide baju batik. Nah, otomatis kalau misalkan website kalian itu ada di Google, ada di rank-rank yang uh, pertama atau di page pertama, uh, orang-orang yang lagi cari baju batik ini pasti akan masuk ke website kalian. Nah, dari uh, mereka masuk ke website kalian, step selanjutnya yaitu conversion atau sales. Jadi uh, opsinya ada dua, antara mereka lanjut untuk beli uh, belanja baju batik, atau opsi kedua yaitu mereka exit atau itu bisa dibilang uh, bouncing. Jadi dari apa beberapa dari mereka bisa menjadi uh, customer kalian, beberapa dari mereka juga bisa ya mereka sekedar exit sekedar lihat kayak gitu. Nah jadi ini tiga step simple. Sebenarnya step itu nggak uh, bisa lebih ko- jauh lebih kompleks dari ini. Tapi ini untuk pengertian aja. Nah, oke, okay, kita lanjut. Nah, gimana sih caranya kita mengimprove website kita sendiri? Nah, yang pertama itu SEO atau biasa disebut search engine optimizer. Nah, uh, jadi SEO ini itu merupakan salah satu cara atau satu teknik untuk meningkatkan uh, website kalian agar terutimasi dengan baik. Jadi, website kalian itu bisa dilihat atau enggak visible di Google. Jadi, kalau misalkan kalian terapin SEO ini, website kalian itu bisa ada di peringkat-peringkat utama Google. Nah, kenapa sih SEO ini uh, apa penting gitu kan? Kan di mana-mana kalian kalau misalnya buat website, pasti nggak asing lah dengan istilah SEO. Nah, karena SEO ini juga merupakan salah satu faktor agar website kalian itu bisa dikunjungi oleh banyak uh, pengunjung. Karena dengan kalian ada di page 1 atau page utama Google, ada di rank-rank atas, rank 1, rank 2, itu udah pasti trafficnya akan lebih besar daripada kalian berada di uh, rank-rank yang ada di bawahnya. Kayak gitu. Lalu yang kedua itu SEM atau Search Engine Marketing. Nah, jadi dari Search Engine Marketing ini, itu... Uh, udah terserah juga poin yang tadi saya sebutin, yaitu beralih beriklan dari konvensional ke platform digital. Nah, jadi kalau misalkan uh, sebelumnya mungkin iklan itu ada di koran, ada di TV, atau semacamnya. Nah, kita udah mulai harus beralih nih ke search engine marketing. Search engine marketing itu apa? Contohnya seperti Google Ads. Jadi Google Ads itu ada yang namanya Google Search. Atau misalnya kalau kalian nonton di YouTube, itu kan ada ads tuh. YouTube Ads. Nah, itu juga salah satu dari search engine marketing. Kayak gitu. Nah, yang ketiga itu choose the best web hosting and domain. Ini juga salah satu faktor utama, yaitu hosting. Karena kalau misalnya kalian misalnya mempunyai satu website, contohlah uh, toko online. Nah, toko online itu uh, harus dipastikan kalau nggak pernah, jangan sampai website itu down. Karena kalau misalnya website itu down, yang tadinya mungkin ada customer yang lagi lihat atau lagi transaksi tiba-tiba uh, batal, itu bakal bersifat krusial juga buat website ataupun penjualan kalian. Nah, jadi pastikan kalian memilih hosting yang benar-benar uh, terbaik plus domain. Nah, domain juga penting nih. Kayak misalnya domain itu ekstensinya misalnya ada .com, ada .id, terus ada .co.id. Itu juga harus disesuaikan sama uh, tipe bisnis kalian. Kalau misalkan tipe bisnis kalian worldwide, mungkin kalian harus consider untuk uh, pilih ekstensi yang .com. Kalau misalnya kalian target audience ya cuma di Indonesia atau mungkin cuma di Jakarta, kalian bisa consider juga untuk uh, menggunakan ekstensi domain.id. Kayak gitu. Nah, selain itu juga harus diperhatiin kalau uh, hosting itu 
uh, kecepatannya. Karena kalau misalkan kecepatannya lambat, loading speednya itu lambat, um, akan ada pengaruhnya juga ke uh, traffic dari website kalian. Karena orang-orang prefer untuk uh, masuk ke website yang loading speednya itu cepat. Seperti itu. Nah, sekarang kita uh, bicarain tentang tujuan ya. Goals itu untuk traffic for your sales. Jadi dari traffic-traffic ini, kita yang tujuan akhir kita itu kan ke sales. Kalau misalkan kalian punya online shop. Atau mungkin kalau kalian punya blog atau punya uh, website untuk seperti artikel-artikel, traffic juga menjadi salah satu tujuan kalian. Karena kan kalau misalkan kalian punya uh, sistem Google Ads atau misalnya advertising di website kalian, udah pasti yang di incer itu trafficnya kayak gitu. Nah ini salah satu contoh. Contohnya misalnya saya search keyword content writer. Nah ini ada dua nih. Yang pertama segmen pertama ini itu dibilangnya SEM atau PPC. SEM itu search engine marketing atau uh, paid per click. Nah jadi kedua website ini itu merupakan uh, iklan. atau uh, search engine yang berbayar. Nah, sedangkan yang di bawah ini, search engine optimizer, ini merupakan uh, website yang emang mereka itu teratas karena uh, sesuai dengan SEO yang diinginkan oleh Google. Jadi, traffic dari sini itu organik, sementara traffic dari sini itu uh, berbayar, kayak gitu. Nah, ini sebenarnya by logic aja. Kalau misalkan kalian ada di rank-rank yang awal-awal nih, kayak contohnya yang pertama ini, ini disebutnya rank 1. Nah, yang di bawahnya itu disebutnya rank 2. Nah, udah pasti rank-rank yang atas ini bakal lebih banyak traffic ya. Dan lebih banyak dikunjungi juga pastinya. Jadi, um, ya sedikit-sedikit kalian harus uh, paham mengenai SEO. Agar website kalian bisa di atas. Seperti itu. Nah, lalu apa lagi yang bisa dilakukan? Nah, do social media marketing. Nah, social media ini juga penting untuk uh, awareness dari bisnis kalian. Nah, impact-nya itu apa sih dari coronavirus ini untuk uh, social media? Nah, ini menurut data yang saya dapatkan, 45% dari uh, global consumer spending more time on social media. 45% dari uh, secara global mereka spending atau mereka menghabiskan waktu lebih banyak di sosial media. Nah, 45% 45% juga spending lebih banyak waktu untuk messaging service. Dan 50% juga mereka lebih banyak untuk streaming di platform-platform streaming. Nah, jadi dari data-data tersebut bisa disimpulkan kalau orang-orang itu lebih banyak untuk menghabiskan waktu secara online ataupun dari digital-digital platform. Jadi, hal-hal ini juga harus kita perhatikan nih di masa-masa pandemi sekarang. Nah, ini juga salah satu faktor kenapa kita harus coba untuk memulai uh, social media marketing. Yang pertama itu less cost. Ditambah more, more effective. Nah, kenapa less cost? Kenapa lebih murah? Karena kalau kita banding ini, iklan yang secara konvensional kita bandingin sama iklan yang secara uh, digital platform. Nah, contohnya kayak misalnya koran atau radio. Nah, semua orang itu bisa uh, nge-reach koran ini. Maksudnya, bukan semua orang ya, tapi siapapun bisa jadi audiensi koran ini. Beda sama kalau misalkan uh, kita iklanin secara digital atau misalnya kita ambil Instagram ads atau Facebook ads. Di situ mereka lebih spesifik. Kayak misalnya kita jualan baju. Nah, kita pakai gunakan uh, Instagram ataupun Facebook Ads. Kita bisa secara spesifik targetin ke orang-orang yang emang interesnya untuk uh, beli baju. Kayak gitu. Nah, misalnya kita jualan uh, ke meja, ke meja batik. Udah pasti kan target kita itu lebih ke pria. Nah, dari uh, digital platform ini, kita juga bisa targetin. Kayak misalnya gendernya kita cuma mau pria. 
Nah, terus uh, umurnya mungkin kita mau dari umur tertentu, kayak misalnya mungkin dari 18 sampai 40, kayak gitu. Nah, lokasinya juga kita bisa buat secara spesifik. Kayak misalnya kita mau satu Indonesia nih, dapetin iklannya. Nah, kita bisa targetin ke satu Indonesia. Beda sama konvensional, kayak misalnya konvensional, mungkin radio. Radio itu cuman, uh, apa, cuman stream di, mungkin di Jakarta aja, atau di Bandung, atau mungkin di kota-kota tertentu. Beda. Jadi, di digital platform ini, kita bisa benar-benar targetin uh, kita mau lokasinya itu di mana sih, behavior-nya apa sih, terus umurnya up, umurnya berapa, terus gender-nya apa, kayak gitu-gitu. Kita bisa lebih secara spesifik, jadi cost-nya itu lebih, uh, lebih teroptimasi dengan baik, sama lebih efektif, karena langsung sampai ke audiens yang kita mau, kayak gitu. Oke, lanjut. Nah, ini salah satu contohnya dari insight yang ada di uh, ini di Instagram. Nah, dari sini kita bisa melihat nih kayak misalnya ini di profile kalau misalkan kalian buka uh, business account, nanti bakal ada tampilan kayak gini. Nah, contohnya website klik itu berapa sih orang-orang yang klik? Terus berapa banyak sih orang yang email? Nah, terus ada juga nih reach reach-nya berapa? Impression-nya berapa? Jadi reach itu berapa banyak sih orang dijangkau, impresinya itu berarti berapa banyak sih orang yang ngelihat profil kita. Nah, terus ada juga discovery ini. Misalnya dari Kamis, Jumat, Sabtu, dari hari-hari ini, itu paling tinggi itu grafiknya di mana? Paling banyak itu orang-orang ngelihat profil kita di mana, kayak gitu. Jadi dari data-data yang udah didapetin, kita bisa lebih optimasi yang efektif itu yang gimana sih. Jadi ke depannya kita bisa do better, kita bisa uh, ngelakuinnya lebih baik, lebih baik, lebih baik. Kayak gitu. Jadi itu beberapa uh, perbedaan dari konvensional sama uh, dari digital platform. Oke, okay, dari saya kurang lebih itu aja. Kalau misalkan ada yang mau ditanya-tanya, bisa taruh di Q&A. Oke, okay, terima kasih. Saya lanjut kasih ke Lintang. Oke, okay, thank you Ben uh, untuk presentasinya. Thank you for your presentation. Now we will move on to our next speakers. Uh, that is Rafael Chan. Uh, okay, now uh, Rafael, you can start uh, your presentation. Yeah, sure. All right. Good morning, everyone. So before I begin, I'd like to introduce uh, myself and my company. Uh, and we, we are originally from China and uh, we are also one of the largest IT platform and in the world. So we have 38 offices across 32 cities in China. Before the pandemic um, happens, we used to have 4,000 employees. And just because of this pandemic, we have downsizing ourselves up to now only 1,500 employees. We have office, uh, office across China, in, including Hong Kong. And we are more like providing intellectual property services and also corporate services for a lot of SME, especially in China. And we have uh, accumulated up to 3 million enterprises as our member uh, ever since 2009. And our platform actually started from 2014. So let me begin now with the how to survive during the COVID-19 crisis sharing. And this is a graph here. You can literally see the potential losers and the potential winners for various of industries. Starting from manufacturing, financial services, education, oil and gas, constructions, real estate, automotives, aviation, marine time, tourists and leisure. They are basically the potential losers and the potential winners, you also can see it can be medical supplies and services food processes, retailing for F&B, and personal health care, ICT, e-commerce, agricultural. So this is a survey from Egypt, actually. And literally, you can tell what kind of like industries are, uh, has been affected and which, which one are not. OK, so the first one I would like to advise is about reviewing your company portfolio. First, starting from your video, if you have any video, try to play it back and see if it's really 
short and simple and it's very clear enough to express or deliver all the messages about your company services or your company portfolio and everything. The second one is your descriptions. Is it going to be too long or is it going to be too short or is not really precise enough or is it going to be like um, too boring to hear or like it's not really attractive? And coming up next is the testimonials. You can also put up some of your testimonials about um, the collaboration partners, comments about how professionalism that you all have or what kind of like services you're provided after they use your services for kind of like re uh, review and so on. Sample case as well, you can tell some successful sample case, literally how many or how much that you help among uh, during your um, company like operations to your clients or to your partners. And even your milestone. Milestone sometimes also will tell the people about how do you grow and what kind of achievement that you, you get do, uh, within the milestone and of course um, never be missed also for the sales kit sales kit literally is to provide most of your business model to tell like um, much more precise about what kind of services you could provide and what is your values that you could bring up for people who engage with you coming up next is brochure the brochure and also the catalog about your product or about your services as well Social media is one of it, um, just now has been shared with um, the speaker previously. And coming up also the West view you should do is like to review your company portfolio first before you really move on into the next and see are you really ready because the, uh, having a very prominent company portfolio is really crucial, especially nowadays everything has to switch over to online. The next one is maintain your relationship, no matter they are vendors, they are suppliers, or they are new, they are old contacts, and you always have to communicate with them, even ask them what is the situation, what is the condition, even if it's not really connected most of the time, but still try to be interactive with them, understand their challenge, understand their all kind of like demands and everything. Maybe it might lead you to another new, new way for discovering the new model for the collaboration or a new model for the businesses. The third one is really important as well is for employees optimizations. You have to be, you have to be always engaged with your team, no matter when, no matter when, as long as like they are still your employees, you, you should be engaged with them all the time. And not just as a boss, also as the employee, you should also work together with your whole company as a team. And you always have to be transparent with all of them because you guys are like a family. So you guys really, really have to work really closely, especially this kind of time. Don't have any different kind of like um, aspect or something. Just try to have same objective, same scope about how do you move on. Even if it's kind of awkward to talk about something, something like communicate for the salary adjustment, they are like work from home, a lot of like companies, you can see like even the multi-billion company, now every, literally every company around the world, they are like talking about the, the, the salary cutting or like the downsizing or like adjustment and so on. And try to discover more new strategies, try to brand, have some brainstorming um, kind of like conference call and try to be active such as in Zoom or Microsoft Team and so on just to be creative and be active in this very critical moment. This also will help definitely for uh, the company's uh, revenue growth as well. At least from now, let, let's together work on it. This is, as I said, um, our company also is, has been facing downsizing, but the reason why actually is to, uh, the main reason actually is to survive. Without surviving, without cutting costs, definitely, is um, gonna be a difficult, very difficult for you to like so-called survive for the long period. And for example, you can go cut costs with the company expenses, uh, evaluate again if there are any necessary payments or any necessary advertisement or promotion that which literally you can cut down or you can reduce or what kind of value that it can bring you whenever like um, you try to go through the expense, company expenses, try to cut down as much as possible. 
The second one is about negotiating with the rental, with the loan, with your interest. For example, a rental, you can speak with the landlord or the owner of the unit or the real estate and so on if you rent your office. And regarding the loan, maybe you can speak with the bank talking about uh, maybe pending for the loan. Maybe you pay it back by six months or 12 months later. And what is the scheme and what is the, um, how do you going to pay back and try to make it longer period rather than just paying as usual. And the third one also is the interest. Try to renegotiate about the interest. For example, like you promise every month you have to pay for the 5%, but just because of this crucial moment, maybe uh, you have to ask them to cut down the interest for 50% or 75% with, uh, each, uh, with some reasons that you could actually provide. For example, like your revenue stream, um, downstream, downsizing, and so on. The number of employees also is, um, is also part of the really important steps for example um if you don't really need as many as um before like because you couldn't afford that anymore your revenue has been affected maybe you can also um rescreen again about the employees which one were really not necessary to have or maybe uh, one of the person they can handle two of a person tasks and so on and lastly also for applying the government grant government support I suppose every country they have all kind of like supports from all around the government. Some just depends if you really go to the website, government website, especially, and try to look for the official website and ask them how can you get the um, try to apply for the government support in this critical moment as well. The fifth one is um, a bit long. It's about reviewing your business model. It can be starting from business to business or business to commercial or consumer, or even F to B, we call it factory to business. Nowadays, uh, we also discover a new business model. Later, I will explain to you about uh, what is our company um, obligations and some of it might be related with you guys. And discover new sales channels, for example, like try to connect with some other community, association, chamber of commerce, even join some online events, just try as many as possible just to discover how can you generate revenue. And coming up next is like, maybe you can switch over to the international market now because internet has no boundaries. You can always try to sell your stuff or you can try to supply your products or supply your services to international market rather than just focusing in the regional or domestic area. And um, always do some promotion. Because, uh, for example, like if you have some inventory, you have some stock that has been holding for a long time, maybe it's time to uh, restructure, maybe also to, to give some um, like so-called 50% discount or massive discount or buy one, get one free. Because nowadays, uh, we call it cash is king. Rather than having your stock, your stock is kind of like um, assets, but cash is also way, way better rather than the assets. So the trying to be like running more more promotion, especially on events, and also uh, even collaborate with different kind of parties, different kind of channels. So this definitely also will help by um, getting more like generating revenue and so on. Okay, for the next one. This is um, a bit different. This one literally is about selling your investments considering for example if you have any kind of like stock investment bond shares property commodities commodities the one just now i mentioned about your stock and the last one is equity in this very crucial moment uh yes indeed uh it's very hard to find buyers however if you have stock on hand or bond on hand or properties and so on if you manage to get buyers consider to sell it and manage to secure yourself with more capitals, with more as, um, cash on hand, it will be much more better than rather than just keeping everything here because nowadays you can see no one could predict or no one could really uh, literally tell how long it's gonna be for the pandemic and hence um, the, the more cash that you can hold or the less so-called stocks bonds that you can hold, uh, it will be better if you can swap it over if you could literally let it go and manage to get some buyer in this uh, critical moment. The last part is about reviewing your company roadmap. 
For example, set yourself the six months timeline and rethink about it again, about what is your new plan. So for example, like upcoming for the six months before the pandemic, what is your plan? And then you have to, you must review it in order for you to survive. So you have to think about the new plan, think about some new model, for example, providing some services during this moment, even you cannot do that, try to connect businesses, interacting businesses with different, different parties and define your value. For example, like what kind of value that you have, go back and check it out with your team, um, having a team um, call, like especially the conference and so on. When you have an internal meeting, try to talk about some new plan, providing new services, what kind of things that you can provide or what kind of businesses you could connect, okay? And the new opportunities as well, seek for new opportunities, for example, try to understand from people's demands, try to understand from people's um, thinking about understanding, especially from the interacting. So try to discover more opportunities about selling or like promoting some other services that literally you don't start before and learn from the experts. Always go to uh, seek for advices from the experts and see how can they grow and then learn about how can they um, still move on and still even like some of them were lucky enough to get more like revenue streaming like going up during this period. You can see a lot of like practices such as in China, for example, there are a lot of factories, a lot of um, um, industries. They try to switch over to become medical equipment suppliers, and even like they are the vehicle companies, even like they are the drug companies, even they are like, even like not related with any like medical equipment, somehow they try to turn themselves into the uh, mass provider, uh, mass um, manufacturing in the short period of time, or even hand sanitizer, just because they have to really seek for the opportunities. So above seven points, uh, my sharing about how do you so-called survive during the COVID-19 crisis. And coming up next, I want to share a little bit about uh, what we are and how come we were here because we are the country partner from China with Marky. Marky, about, uh, as Davin also introduced just now about they are going to build up the technology center. Literally the technology center, this is the um, 3D graphics about the floor plan about um, the images about how do we gonna um, build up together. So they're gonna have an event space, a big space at Cyber2 Tower. And supposedly it has, uh, it will be starting in April, but somehow has been postponed due just because of this global pandemic. So what is the technology center actually and how could it relate it with you? You can simply take a look on uh, the images over here. For example, from the first on the left is the lift button hologram. Nowadays, a lot, a lot of people think like to have a, it's better to not any kind of like item or object within this pen. Actually our fingers, in contact with any lift button or whatever items or object, it might transfer from one to another. Hence, you can see on the left, now China, most of the leaf has been installed with this leaf button hologram. You literally are touching the air and you don't have to really touch anything. It's like an AR. So it's much more to prevent you to carry some sort of like viruses to another by using this leaf button hologram technology. Any one of you, for example, like you have kind of like demands for technology, you are looking for some technology or you have technology to promote, you also can connect us or connect to Marquee for the technology licensing or commercializations because this is part of the, uh, the part of the service that we provide. The second one is about AI robot for education. For example, nowadays, a lot of kids, a lot of children, and they have been so-called stuck and study from home. And this because as the school is not open yet, so maybe they have a lot more spare time. Maybe you can consider about an AI robot for your child about education, about learning. For example, sometimes um, the, the parents, maybe they need also for some, some break. Hence, they also might use for AI robot for education. They don't have to 24-7 um, babysit 
protecting the children all the time. And the third photo on the right, you can see is a food waste compost machine, literally, literally generating, uh, it has been covered up to 50% every year of uh, every people in the life. So literally every general waste, 50% and above is from food waste. Hence, we also have um, technology, for example, like um, one of our, um, part from our stakeholder, they will be providing for home unit or even big industrial unit for the food waste compost, literally just to handle all the food waste, to turn the organic waste into the fertilizer within 24 hours time. And the next one here you can see, for example, in instant is an indoor GPS. A lot of people might be so-called miss out the appointment or maybe they are late for the appointment just because they don't know about the venue, the premise. When they go to the place, they couldn't find the exit. Ask yourself how many of you were late or how many of you even like miss your flight, miss your train during this uh, because like you couldn't find your positioning in the indoor or like um, kind of like a big places, such as um, airports, such as train station. Yeah, they don't even know where is it exit B, where is the cinema, hence like it's um, wasted a lot of time. Imagine if there are any indoor GPS that you can install at a massive space, then this is also one of these um, things that you could change you could revolution, uh, revolutions of the technology to the society. And on the right one, you can see also for the facial recognition for various of the points. Facial recognition, it became very common in China. You can see this, um, the crime rate is very low because everything is um, AI and facial recognition has been literally becoming a common practice in our surrounding various of the um, industries such as um, digital payment like Alipay. Alipay, um, even we actually can go to 7-Eleven and using, uh, by using our face to pay, make the payment. And this is something like literally um, different comparing to the traditional one. For example, a lot of countries, they are still using cash or even um, credit card. So in China, they are more like cash and cardless, so we call it. And a lot of the payment also, not just payment, even like for gateway, for security points, checkpoints and everything, they are using facial recognition. So these are the things also just to, for you to know, we are um, dealing with a lot of technologies. If you have few months later, maybe you can scan over here. You can scan this QR code or you can go to the link and fill up whatever demands that you have. So before I end, I would like to talk about what do we have and what WTIP is generating now in this outbreak. We started to have our online plus offline e-commerce store by ourselves. And our store is literally a bit different comparing with other like um, JD.com, like Alibaba, like um, Tianmo, Timo and so on. So we are different because like we provide more than that. We provide one e-commerce in China. Basically, we are, are the IP service provider we provide IP values branding or for how do you promoting your IP in China we need to have 300 offline store in 2020 and we are much more focused in the tier 2 and tier 3 cities we have three type of the store the first one is pilot store it, um, basically it's starting from 100 square meters and they're focused in central business district area and the second one is retail store is the minimum size of 50 to 100 square meters. It's much more at the commercial area. And the last one is experience store. It's a small square, uh, it's only from 30 to 50 square meters. It's more focusing in the residential area and industrial park, even including inside the school or inside um, the society and so on. So um, literally people could go to it. And online plus offline store, we will also sell, we will also promote in the same time. So this is a very first time our company built up our e-commerce platform. As I said, we have 3 million enterprises as our member before. So we started this one, um, this new model during the pandemic time. So this is also 
part of the example, as I said, uh, you can scan is in English. You can drop your inquiries about it. If you tend to sell your product or you tend to connect more about getting into China market, as everyone knows now, China is the only country is uh, market open. As uh, you can see, they have been dealing with um, the panda, um, the outbreak really, really um, with a very good practice. Hence, a lot of country also now China also helping a lot of countries. So the only market now is opening in China. So um, welcome all just to come to speak with us, talk to us, or um, drop your inquiries about it. We will feel free to connect with you guys. So before I end, this is my um, contact. This is uh, on the right. You can see my WeChat ID. And um, on the, in the middle, this is also my WhatsApp. You can also WhatsApp me privately. That's my email. Feel free to also check it out with our social media, Facebook, Instagram, also uh, our LinkedIn and our YouTube. So um, if you have any inquiry, I'll look forward to see and speak with you at the Q&A session. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you very much, uh, Rafael, for your presentation. I hope uh, the participants here are now enlightened on how, uh, how to do the best practice uh, during this COVID-19 crisis. Okay, before we start with the Q&A session, uh, I want to ask you guys to fill out. Aku mau minta tolong teman-teman untuk um, isi feedback form dari Dewa Talks di bit.ly slash, um, slash Dewa Talks Feedback. Uh, kritik dan saran dari kalian akan sangat bermanfaat untuk webinar kami selanjutnya. Dan di feedback form itu, kalian bisa... Nah, thank you. Nah, di feedback itu kalian juga bisa isi untuk keterangan um, uh, untuk isi sertifikat kalian. Jadi, boleh tolong diisi ya teman-teman untuk um, sertifikatnya. So, we have a promo collaboration with Connect. So, uh, any of you who want to try Connect's co-working space, uh, you can try for free uh, the co-working space uh, until 3.30, sorry, I mistyped the due date, until 30 September 2020, you can uh, try Connect's co-working space for free trial. Uh, and then, uh, untuk yang kunjungan berikutnya, kalian bisa uh, mendapatkan potongan sebesar uh, 50% uh, untuk kunjungan berikut-berikutnya. Jadi, untuk co-working space di Connex, kalian bisa coba free trial sampai 30 September 2020, dan ada potongan harga sebesar 50% untuk kunjungan-kunjungan berikutnya. Uh, kalau misalkan kalian mau tahu lebih lanjut mengenai promosi ini, kalian bisa langsung kontak aku atau ke Mahesa di 0812-1995-8588. Uh, Dewab juga sedang ada uh, promo, promo untuk kalian yang sedang di rumah aja. Jadi dengan menggunakan kode promo di rumah aja, kalian sudah bisa mendapatkan uh, potongan diskon 50% off of our cloud, cloud hosting starting from Hunter Package above uh, yearly paid. Dengan uh, dengan menggunakan kode promo di rumah aja, kalian sudah bisa mendapatkan potongan sebesar 50%. Kemudian kalian mendapatkan free domain plus SSL, free website migration, dan free unlimited bandwidth. Nah, kode promo di rumah aja ini hanya berlaku sampai 30 April, jadi uh, bisa segera digunakan ya teman-teman, karena ini hanya limited time offer. Nah, apa aja sih yang kalian akan dapatkan dari uh, paket hosting Dewa Web? Uh, ini beberapa fiturnya, jadi kalian akan mendapatkan free lifetime domain, kemudian ada uh, free migration service, free premium WordPress themes dan plugins, uh, kemudian ada ISO 27001, uh, dan juga Intel Xeon Gold Cascade Play, yaitu udah teknologi terbaru ya teman-teman. Kemudian uh, ada juga Ninja Support kita yang akan uh, bantu kalian untuk uh, menjawab permasalahan kalian dengan website selama uh, 24, 24 jam. Uh, jadi uh, kalian sudah bisa memulai website kalian sendiri hanya dengan uh, 300 ribu aja, itu udah potongan diskon, minimal paket hunter, kalian sudah bisa punya website kalian untuk satu tahun, jadi free domain, free SSL, uh, dan free mitigation. Nah, uh, jadi kalau misalkan kalian yang mungkin dari hosting provider lain atau um, sedang menggunakan private blog yang free, dan kalian mau pindah ke self-hosting, kalian boleh banget uh, pindah ke Dewa Web karena kita juga menyediakan free site migration, uh, di mana nanti Ninja kita juga akan bantu uh, proses migrasi secara gratis dan cepat, dan uh, 
website kalian akan migrasi hosting kalian akan selesai dalam waktu satu hari aja. Oke, okay. mungkin itu cukup dari aku uh, untuk promosinya. Uh, mungkin dari teman-teman juga udah selesai ya isi feedback formnya. Uh, mungkin sekarang kita bisa masuk ke uh, sesi Q&A dan sesi Q&A akan dibawakan oleh Mahesa dari uh, Konex. Oke, okay. yang pertama uh, pertanyaan pertama dari uh, Mbak Lisa Kosdi. Is there any improvement implemented by your company due to the situations? And I guess uh, Raffles will answer it. Hi, Raffles. Uh, yeah, actually, you, if you're talking about improvements, there are a lot of things, especially nowadays. Yes, indeed, we have discovered a new business model. And uh, we believe that from this new business model, for example, as the e-commerce and also for the offline store and online experience store on offline store this one is also uh, one of the part of it and secondly we managed to discover a lot more new services that we could provide during this period for example like registering uh, registering um, some of these like businesses for overseas for overseas like stakeholders that literally they don't even need to go to china to get into the business of china so this is also part of this uh, improvement implemented i believe And uh, yeah, as simple as that. Mm. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, next question is uh, ini I believe from Bapak Andi Mas Iben. Ini mungkin pertanyaannya untuk Kak Benedik ya. Uh, tadi kan contohnya untuk B2C. Kalau B2B bagaimana ya untuk improve website-nya saat ini? Lalu apakah saat ini saat yang tepat untuk lakukan SEM karena pemasukan berkurang, sedangkan budget rendah dan SEO pun memakan waktu yang sangat lama? Oke. Okay. Ya bisa dipersilakan. Okay. Thank you buat uh, pertanyaannya. Uh, saya jawabnya pakai bahasa Indonesia aja ya, karena pertanyaan juga bahasa Indonesia. Uh, tadi untuk improve website itu itu bisa diimplementasikan untuk B2C ataupun B2B karena sebenarnya sama aja untuk kedua itu, karena sama-sama untuk improve website. baik dari misalnya menggunakan uh, provider hosting yang lebih baik atau di bidang SEO karena SEO itu uh, universal maksudnya entah itu untuk website B2B atau B2C kalau selama tujuannya itu untuk visible di Google agar trafficnya masuk ke website ya sama-sama aja nah lalu apakah saat ini saat ini tepat melakukan SEM tergantung kalau misalkan emang masih Uh, model tergantung model bisnisnya sih. Kalau emang goalsnya untuk uh, melakukan seperti misalnya penjualan ataupun uh, awareness atau apapun, selama maksudnya bisnis model belum terhenti atau belum stop, ya SEM ya tepat-tepat aja. Karena sebenarnya SEM di uh, apa masa sekarang juga, kalau dari data itu saya sempat uh, research juga untuk budgetnya pun mengalami penurunan. Karena emang banyak bisnis-bisnis yang uh, banyak yang lagi emang berhenti sih untuk apa untuk mereka marketingnya atau banyak bisnis model yang emang lagi pause ataupun berhenti juga sih. Jadi kalau misalkan bisnis modelnya dari uh, Pak Andi Mas ini emang masih oke, okay, ya SEM juga untuk masa sekarang bisa efektif karena Uh, yang saya sebutin budgetnya juga udah mengalami penurunan juga. Oke. Okay. Ya berarti karena memang kebanyakan dari kita semua stay at home ya, uh, Ben ya. Jadi kan mm-hmm. orang lebih fokus di social media, di website gitu ya. Jadi mm-hmm. this is the right time to promote on the web ya, on the cloud. Yeah. Ya. Instead uh, of. Ya merupakan salah satu cara yang masih efektif lah untuk dilakukan. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, next question is from Sinta. I guess this will be for Mr. Apple, yeah. Even though we have a good digital... You mean for tourism? Yeah, for tourism. <laughs> for tourism industry, literally, maybe you can... Um, to promote because uh, as I know a lot kind of like 
leisuring places, they are still not confirming what, when, and like to work out with some promotion plan or package. And because during this kind of like period, maybe some of the people also might wanted to get a massive discount promotion things. Look at yourself like uh, the, um, for example, I'm not sure if anyone knows a metered flight ticket that literally you can just buy with only 500 ringgit per year. Then you can fly for unlimited time. So this is also one of the promotion during the out might have some spare room to give some promotion. Maybe you can try to give some sort of like the money or something. Literally, people could pay first or like with terms and condition. Try to make up more new promotion. I think starting from promotion, definitely you can do something. First of all, secondly, maybe also you can try to um, do some sort of a tutorial. Do some sort of like packaging, customized packaging for some other people who wanted to know more about um, traveling and try to learn more or providing a new, um, for example, new tutorial for people who wanted to travel or reach any other country, discover more localized, localized uh, venue, localized activities, rather than just doing some standard practice like, or standard promotion comparing with other, you have no specialty, try to be unique. I think this is the way maybe you can it can help for the tourism so I, industry. In the a year, yeah. yeah. I mean for uh, Asia. Yeah, yeah. the Asian That's one you can three. check out on the website, but literally the flight ticket is free, but they have to be like in booked in advance. I think if I'm not wrong, it's like six months before the period yeah. and something. And the ticket will uh it, it will not gonna cost you, but you still have to pay for the airport tax, you still have to pay for uh, some other thing. Okay. So it's not really completely free, but however, this literally 500, um, I mean like unlimited flight ticket, it really sell a lot during this time. Okay. Yeah. So it, uh, I assume that it's more flexible, yeah, during this period, yeah. Make mm -hmm. it more yeah. flexible and agile. <laughs> yes, correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, next question. I guess this is for uh, uh, KBN, yeah. Uh, ini very specific, yeah. Impression di IG business itu artinya apa ya? Oke, okay. oke, okay. uh, thank you pertanyaannya. Uh, impression itu di Instagram itu impression itu sebenarnya kan artinya impresi. Itu berapa banyak sih? Uh, apa? Kalau misalnya bisnis IG uh, Instagram bisnis berarti berapa banyak orang yang ngelihat profil dari uh, Instagram itu? Nah, kalau misalkan di post atau misalnya di iklan berarti berapa banyak orang yang Uh, ngelihat iklan ataupun post itu kayak gitu jadi beda sama misalnya kayak reach atau jangkauan jadi satu orang itu bisa uh, menghasilkan beberapa impresi kayak misalnya contohnya uh, saya saya ngelihat satu post atau satu iklan saya bisa aja ngelihat dua atau tiga kali sedangkan kalau misalnya reach atau jangkauan ya berarti saya satu orang dihitungnya satu kayak gitu jadi itu impresi impression oh, so, uh, berarti intinya satu orang bisa lebih dari satu itu ya kalau impressionnya bisa oke okay. oke okay, karet itu dari kak Linda ya selanjutnya this is for apples again from kak Andi Mas Iben dear apple clear presentations optimize your employees in order to avoid any decrease in product or service mm, very good question actually um we started to downsizing because as okay first of all it will be um kind of difficult because it always goes through the revenue generation if some people some employee cannot generate um as uh, the mean like the minimum um revenue then we have to so-called cut them off And somehow those who could generate revenue, we will still maintain. And how do we optimize our employees order? Um, it's always about how agile or how like kind of like productive it can be or a lot of like engagement with the staff. And uh, actually it's all starting from plan. If you have a very good plan, your staff working on it or your team has to build a very better plan, 
So you guys work according from the plan and work as a team. Definitely, it will um, maximize all kind of like your, your uh, employees' um, time and efforts. Because honestly, work from home is actually much more efficient comparing with normal day. You don't have to stuck in the traffic anymore. No more like machet in, especially in Jakarta, right? You don't have to stuck. Anytime you just turn on the t uh, camera and how, how much could you deliver and how much do you connect with business, it all depends on the person. If the person really uh, diligent enough to work on uh, work by himself, work with the team, 24-7 connecting with businesses, def uh, therefore, I believe there will be more and more like um, meetings or productive um, um, like come, comes up. And yeah. And also, if uh, another one is what about decreasing the product or the service quality to avoid in to avoid any decrease of product or service quality, it always depends because you yourself know the best about which um, which employees were the best for you and what are the values for all the employees. Every employee definitely they have their own values. Just um, depends for which kind of uh, which employees at the moment you are much more like needed rather than, um, I mean, like it's, it, it's always optional for you to um, the cut off your employee or not. I know it's a really hard decision. Somehow it always back to the revenue streamline. If the, the um, employee could uh, really active and really could bring you a lot of revenue, definitely you can uh, make them to stay. You can keep them. Somehow if so another part, even like he or she is very active, but they cannot deliver any revenue. Maybe it's also the time for you to consider maybe uh, the cut off because uh, you are the, you're, you're, you're the one who only know yourself, like what is your financial situation at this critical moment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah. <laughs> and every employees have to be giving like a hundred percent all of the strengths that they've got, yeah. <laughs> you must work harder than before. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you for the questions. And then, okay, this is another question. I guess this is for, for our pros again, yeah. From mm -hmm. uh, Muhammad Rufi. I guess this is the last question, yeah. How can you be not too sensitive when communicating with your customers this day? <laughs> okay. uh, in terms of sensitive, uh, as I said, be transparent is the best. Always be transparent with uh, all these kind of, no matter your customer, no matter your business partner, no matter your collaboration channel or party, be, be honest. I think be transparent, be honest also is one of these very crucial part because everyone will understand. They will not criticize you in this very, Critical moment is very moment like everyone is facing the problem, not just yourself, not just your customer. So, why not try to be? Um, I mean, like forget about the sensitive part, but communicate with genuine, authentic, and honest part, and see how you can deliver or how you can discover a new business model or kind of like a new collaboration or kind of like a new things that literally they will agree about you or try to help each other. I think this very moment. A lot of people should learn about um, one of this. I'm not sure if anyone knows. One of these also uh, very important about how to now the same competitive. What do you think if you merge with your competitive? What do you think you merge with your enemy? Then you guys to become one. This is also part of a strategy for surviving. Rather than close down your company, why not you offer yourself? To with some opponent and literally you can have your strength and your weakness and vice versa two party maybe you can negotiate about how do guys merging so be transparent and don't think about sensitive things i think um, everyone is sensitive nowadays and everyone putting up a lot of awareness but how to fix the problem this is the the only what that you have to really focus on how to fix your problem how to be uh, like survive rather than talking about uh, this and that is useless. Try to look back, look at the mirror, look at yourself. How are you going to survive these days? And how do your company come to sustain? And I think this is much important. Yeah. Okay, so it means that 
be transparent ya. ya. Uh, lebih terbuka aja ya teman-teman. Kalau misalnya memang istilahnya uh, this is condition is not only from your side but everyone <laughs> happen. So just be transparent and and could be merged. Yeah, yeah. it's 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 okay. I, I guess it's a good idea. Okay, uh, Lintang, I guess uh, that's all of the five questions. Okay, I will give it to Lintang again and thank you so much, yeah, for the time. Thank you, Kamaisa, for uh, helping me with the Q&A session. And now I want to inform you guys about our next webinar. Uh, untuk webinar kita selanjutnya, kita akan mengadakan uh, webinar dengan Sosia Bas. di hari Kamis 30, 30 April 2020 mengenai influencer marketing for your brand. Uh, webinar hari ini juga tentunya akan kami upload ulang di sana. Jadi yang bagi kalian yang kelewatan, kalian bisa langsung cek videotalks.com atau uh, cek di youtube.com slash dewaweb untuk video-video webinar kita juga bisa cek di situ. Dan jangan lupa follow Instagram kita di Dewa Talks Official untuk melihat jadwal-jadwal webinar selanjutnya. Uh, terima kasih teman-teman yang sudah hadir. Thanks everyone who joined today's webinar. Uh, thank you Mr. Rafael, thank you Benedict, thank you Kamahesa for your time. Thank you. And thank partner. You, okay, that's all from me. Maaf kalau ada salah kata selama webinar ini. Uh, terima kasih semuanya sudah datang. Sudah semuanya. Enjoy and stay healthy. Cheers. Bye. Bye, Bye. everyone. Bye. Thank you guys thank for you. coming. Cari hosting yang aman. Dewa web.